Well, my current all-time favorite director just put out a brand new movie called The Killer with Michael Fassbender. We're going to review it. Let's do this. The Killer stars Michael Fassbender, Tilda Swinton, and is directed by David Fincher. What's up, guys? Welcome to a brand new 2023 review Trying a little bit of a different backdrop here, just messing around with things. You know, I get bored with things. I'm shooting it with my little vlog camera, but uh, let me know what you guys think, all right? I like mixing it up a little bit. But a uh, brand new David Fincher movie, one of my all time favorite directors. I'm talking freaking Fight Club, Zodiac, The Game, Gone Girl. He seems to have made a shift to TV. I think he had um, a part to play in House of Cards. And uh, then he's got Mindhunter. And it seems like he's kind of married to Netflix now, currently. This movie is coming to Netflix. I luckily got to watch this on the big screen tonight. They had a critic showing. And uh, you know, I think David Fincher movies need to be seen on the big screen. So it's a shame that um, the, the masses won't be able to see this on the big screen. They, they got to watch this on Netflix. Still a really, really great movie. Cat out of the bag, letting you know right now. But first off, let's give you a quick plot synopsis. Michael Fassbender, he is an assassin. But unfortunately, he's not perfect. There is a, a mistake that is made. And the corporation he's working for, the client he's working for, they threaten something that is near and dear to him. And of course, he has to get revenge. And uh, really, I guess, just to tie up any loose ends it becomes personal, which is interesting because this is a character that uh, is devoid of emotion. He goes out of his way to not take anything personal because that just complicates things more when it comes to the job. He has this like cadence, this inner monologue throughout the movie, uh, basically stating you know these certain rules that he has to abide by in order to become uh, or just be the best assassin that he can possibly be. And uh, this movie, I, I say the first uh, 20 minutes is him um, doing this job and just showing how mundane and boring the life of an assassin can be. It's not all sunglasses and, and swimming pools like you would think it is, like a lot of Hollywood movies portray. It's a lot of waiting, and, and that's what he's doing. Uh, he's listening to music. He's uh, stretching. He's doing whatever he can to keep his mind occupied. He's got a major boner for the Smiths. And I'd say those first 20 minutes are kind of setting up who he is as a character. Some might find that portion of the movie a little trying, a little boring. Uh, but David Fincher is no stranger to taking his time setting the table. And I knew that going into this. I'm such a massive David Fincher fan. I can't overstate that enough. Um, I just love his approach to setting up a scene. Uh, and I think this particular story in this movie is perfect for him because of how meticulous he is as a director. This character might be one of the most meticulous characters I've seen portrayed on screen. We've, we, we've seen so many assassin movies, but I've been waiting for David Fincher to direct one because he would really, with painstaking detail, show just how, uh, by the book, and meticulous this character can be. And it's really interesting. He has so many different names throughout the movie and, and I don't even know what his like main, I don't even know if the movie actually gives his actual name. And that's kind of the point. You know, it, it, we're getting um, a bird's eye view inside his mind and it, you can really see that when he's like just playing his music because when, you know, as a sniper, when you are, you know, shooting your weapon, you have to be calm and you just have to be patient. And so to do that, he has his music in. Fincher will have the music playing when you're inside his mind. And then when you're actually seeing him, then he almost mutes the music. Also, like any assassin movie, you know, this is a character that's going to quite a few different locations throughout uh, you know, we're going to be in Paris, then we're going to be in like New Orleans and Florida and, uh, you know, a couple other different places. But I like 
how it just showed in painstaking detail the process of like say when he kills somebody um, how he disposes of the evidence he has the, like like i said these little rules that he mentions about if you don't want anybody to solve the puzzle then you need to discard a few pieces and then spread out the rest of the pieces and that's what he does i also like that this is more character driven it's not a full-on action movie like say a john wick whereas john wick is just so out there and in your face and it's just like action overload there's an action scene in this movie and it's it's flawless you know the the fight choreography you can tell that everything has been laid out and it's it's down and dirty but you know just to showcase how effective this character is in like a hand-to-hand -hand combat situation and it's not an easy fight at all it's pretty uh pretty gnarly but really the star of this movie a couple things michael fassbender he's pretty much in every scene and he is amazing. And I think he was the perfect actor for this role. He just fits the character. And he's really fun to watch. Because you want an actor in there that's believable. You believe Michael Fassbender could be an assassin when you watch this movie. You can tell that this is an actor that takes his craft extremely seriously. And then just Fincher's direction. I could literally watch David Fincher direct making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich he is just so intoxicating with just how he uh, moves the camera if i'm being honest you know you got the the high angles and the low angles but everything has a purpose and and we all know that fincher he's a hundred take guy if he needs to be you know he he will not stop until he gets the scene exactly the way he wants it Fincher's always had this rule, you know, some directors, they say there's more than one way to shoot a scene and Fincher's like, no, there's actually one way to shoot the scene, but you just have to keep trying until you find it. It's hard to give this movie any cons. I think the only thing you can do is compare it to uh, Fincher's catalog, you know, movies like Zodiac and, and Fight Club and Seven. That's three of my favorite films of all time. Is this movie in that league? No, I don't think so as of right now, but I'll definitely watch this again and it fits nicely in Fincher's catalog. You know, it's not like a bad Fincher movie at all. It's great. It's really great. So I'm going to give it a, a super high purchase worthy and I'm looking forward to watching it again because just like any Fincher movie, I guarantee you when you watch this again, you're going to notice things that you didn't notice the last time. You know, Fincher likes to put little Easter eggs in his movies not necessarily Easter eggs, but just, you know, uh, just little items in the background to, you know, to uh, fit in with the story that you might not notice on the first watch. Definitely check out The Killer when it comes to Netflix. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Let me know what you think of this backdrop. I mean, it's my normal studio, but I'm just trying different things. And uh, I kind of like this, actually. It's easier to set up, too. Uh, also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do people on Fridays. Follow my drum drums on my socials. Support me on Patreon. I buy me a coffee. And I'm guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Drum drum out.